Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Charmed Rewind. We're back better than ever. The sequel to the last episode, kinda. The sequel to the last episode in season seven. Well, these were the ones that um that uh won the poll. They tied uh, last time. But this really has nothing at all to do with that last episode. Th we these episodes, I think, were pretty related. <laughs> oh yeah, A tying theme here. Mm -hmm. Of uh, Dean Norris, I, I think he was there in spirit in this second. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I, I know you were super excited when it's like, what season is it? Seven? <laughs> yeah. It's like the further you get into charm, the worse it is. <laughs> yeah, you kind of <laughs> like d uh, determine how good, how much your enjoyment's going to be. Like the, the less it is, the further you get into the show. Yeah. You know, most shows have that season one awkwardness, but it's like with Charmed, the awkwardness is the good part of it. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather have that than this. Uh, um, yeah, this is a pretty bad showing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was so hard to keep up with notes because it's just constant barrage of like annoying or terrible things going on. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's an idea here that could work, but you know, it would have... Charmed would probably have to be a better show for it to have worked. With yeah, I, I will say this: there were things in this I felt were 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 decent. So the whole thing wasn't terrible, yeah, but mostly but, but because mostly. <laughs> mostly the stuff without the girls was the good part. Mm -hmm. Um, so we watched uh, season seven, episode three, "Cheaper by the Coven," <laughs> which uh, <laughs> good. We needed Tom Welling in there for. <laughs> What? Cheaper by the oh, dozen yeah. movies. <laughs> right, yeah. Took me a second for that one. Uh, like I said before, this tied on the poll um, with the Misha Collins episode. So now we're doing the second one. This is the one where the uh, Piper babies are fighting. The mm -hmm. Piper Hellspawn uh, are fighting. So uh, they, there's a spell cast to uh, get rid of their sibling rivalry. It makes the girls uh, act like a bunch of children. Um, Grandma Ghost shows up to be Hayton. Mm -hmm. Um, then, uh, mom ghost shows up. There's a whole family reunion here. Yeah. You know, like I throw a lot of hate on Piper in these and this episode's not going to be any different because man, <laughs> she's an idiot. <laughs> she, yeah. It, <sighs> Shut up. You stupid idiots. Every time it seems like she's worse than the last time somehow. <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> Like, uh, but I mean, I, especially the Misha Collins one, like, it was always kind of there, that, like, um, acidicness. But, um, <laughs> it was at least, like, there were redeeming qualities before, and here, like, it's gone. Yeah. It's gone, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now she's had double hell spun, and she's like, I, I think we've probably complained about this before, and I know you certainly brought it up in your videos, but like how dumb Piper is for not binding her baby's powers. And yeah. this is a episode is a great example of how dumb that is, because they're they almost kill each other a few times. Yeah. They're pretty blase about it too, considering like how terrible yeah. that could have turned out. The babies are like teleporting and then there's like, oh yeah, we probably teleported to his rooms. <laughs> Maybe, who knows? Maybe he teleported into traffic and he's dead now. <laughs> yeah. Re remember when Wyatt summoned a dragon that, uh, mm -hmm. that made a dragon out of his mind that uh, probably killed thousands of people in the city? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that didn't. Uh, they didn't fix that. They didn't change anything that would have stopped that from happening again. No. And babies, look, you can teach babies, you know, to, like, behave themselves, but babies be babying. They're, yeah. they're still going to... Yeah, babies... stopping them from summoning a dragon again. Very... He murdered someone with a sword once. He's a killer. Yeah. He's a killer now. <laughs> babies! They're babies! Very limited on what a baby's going to do or, like, learn yeah. from you. Like, very basic yeah. things. But if you give a baby this certain amount of power and just like, all right, baby, don't be good with this it, power. It, <laughs> just like, it's, it's, a it's okay to bind their powers. Uh, yeah, we probably brought this up on the podcast before even. But, like, um, the uh, the metaphor I believe I used in the videos was like, okay, well, you can give the baby a key, the keys to a car and mm. put them in a car. But 
that's not going to like change the fact that like they're not they don't know how to drive yet so you mm-hmm. just wait until they're old enough to get a license or whatever so why wouldn't you wait until they're old enough to give them you don't lie to them about their powers that's mm-hmm. the the thing they're worried about that like which in this episode uh, there's a lot of things that don't really make sense yeah. concerning how they grew up they grew up without knowing that they had powers and um, the, she feels a bit resentful about that. She thinks the kids should grow up knowing about this stuff. And all mm-hmm. you do is you just don't lie to them. Yeah. Like, you don't tell them cars but don't exist. You just don't let them anyway. drive a car until they're yeah. old enough. <laughs> yeah, neither of them are old enough to comprehend it anyway. So it yeah. doesn't matter. Wait it's... until they get a license to magic, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, like, oh, I don't want to... Like, you might as well have a bunch of weapons set, sitting there and be like, well, yeah. I don't want to keep these babies from these weapons. That wouldn't be right. So I'm just going to let them play with them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll, huh? we'll see what, what? happens. <laughs> this is dumb. All right, let's let's uh, let's jump into this episode. I'm sure we'll get into more of this as we go along. <laughs> uh, the very first part of the episode is Paige complaining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the very first line she's like um she's like i don't have time for this or i don't have i can't do this or whatever it's uh phoebe and Paige complaining at each other so it's art imitating life (laughs) (laughs) yeah i don't think this uh this happened when we did the last podcast maybe we alluded to it i don't remember but uh, i don't remember if it had happened (laughs) yeah there was some stuff going on on twitter (laughs) between uh uh, Rose McGowan and uh, and um, and uh, Alyssa, Alyssa Milano. Milano. I know her name, right? <laughs> the other one. <laughs> the other one. Yeah, she was talking about how she uh, made her cry whenever they would like uh, renew the season, and she just made the set hell, which um, it seemed very clear from what was going on on screen. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. pretty tense. <laughs> yeah. So. It's nice to watch these scenes knowing that they loathe each other, depending <laughs> on the moment. <laughs> mm. um, but they're complaining. At this point in time, there's a lot of stuff going on in the in the story, actually, right now. And, and I had to, like, I, I'm sure you, too, like, didn't really remember a lot of what was happening until, like, people mentioned something. It's like, oh, yeah, I guess that's what's going yeah, on. Yeah, like, they're still yelling at Leo for killing Gideon and all that stuff. Yeah, I believe at this point in time, this was just after the stupid um, multiple arms Piper uh, <laughs> Hindu thing, and I th- I think Leo might have killed James Avery as well at that point. Am I wrong? That was he somewhere around powers. the Avatar stuff, so yeah. Okay, so uh, he, he kill- it, it was in the multiple arms when I think James Avery's in, and that happens. Yeah, so I think that happens, and that's around the time, like... She finds out all the shit that happened. There's the thing about Gideon, and they're, I think, separated. I don't think they're divorced at this point, but they're separated because he's dark Leo at the moment. He's, <laughs> dark. he's going through some dark stuff. <laughs> and um, and this is where uh, I think... Um, he's a every, rogue all the, white lighter. <laughs> he's a rogue white lighter. What's a rogue white lighter? <laughs> um, he's... Uh, this was after um, all the stuff with the elders and Q Elder was around and uh, they were too apathetic to keep magic school going after Gideon died. And so Paige has taken over and she is the headmaster of magic school mm-hmm. brief- briefly before she pawns it off on Leo. Like, I don't want this anyway. <laughs> you do it. And then we'll you just let it. the demons have it. <laughs> yeah. Nobody cared. But at this moment in time, uh, she is the headmaster of magic school. She's kind of overwhelmed with everything. Um, but she is also trying to convince Piper to have a Wiccaning for Chris. Uh, Wiccaning is a real thing in the Wiccan religion. I'm not sure what exactly it actually is supposed to do. But in the Charmed universe, they summon a bunch of ghosts of their ancestors, bless them, gives them good luck, and protects them from demons or something. Yeah. Something like that. Supposedly. Apparently it doesn't work, though, as Piper even complains that I think it didn't work for Wyatt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did it for Wyatt, and I think that was around the time there was some necromancer that, like, uh, that was an old boyfriend of Grandma Ghosts, and there was some <laughs> fuckery going on there. <laughs> yeah. But she wants Chris's wickening to happen. Piper doesn't want it to happen because of all the Leo stuff. She's on an anti-magic kick, which is no different than normal. <laughs> yeah, she she's like, we're going to live our lives normal. But the babies can still have these superpowers and try to kill each other occasionally. That's fine. <laughs> well, her anti-magic kick is to just go like, don't use magic, please, and whine about it rather than actually doing anything about it. Like, say, binding her children's powers. Yeah. 
So all this stuff keeps happening. It's like, you can't just say, please, demons don't attack, or please, babies don't use your powers. Mm -hmm. They're babies. So (laughs) I don't know why Paige is so insistent on this. This doesn't seem like a through line through the episode. Once they summon Grandma Ghost, they summon Grandma Ghost because she thinks she'll be able to convince Piper to do it. That ends Paige's uh, investment in this whole thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, she's off for, like, some subplot to be kind of ignored through most of this. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so they summon uh, Grandma Ghost, and she can just make herself physical, I guess, because yeah. like, she just it's easier than doing the effect. <laughs> yeah, they just, they call her up, and yeah, she's, like, semi-translucent and stuff. And then, yeah, she takes a step forward and then is solid. <laughs> Because they don't want to do the effect through the whole episode. I know, but it's I like, think... why d- Why is she even semi-translucent when she first shows up? She might as well just be solid. There's no point to it. Like, I don't know what the step forward means. <laughs> I don't know. I, I could be wrong. Uh, people will correct me if I am. But I think this is the first time she does something like that. Because I think other times they summoned her, something dumb would happen. So like, oh, the fairy tale thing. They wished her to be alive again. So she's physical. So a wolf can eat her. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, so they would do things like, here's why we don't have to do the effect. But normally she would be ghost-like. Yeah. The explanation is nothing. She can just take a step forward and be solid. (laughs) They can do a lot of things in this episode where it's like, you could do this the whole fucking time. (laughs) Yeah, really? (laughs) You assholes. (laughs) I mean, there's a lot of talk too about how um, their mother couldn't raise them since she was dead, but apparently it would have been really easy because all Grandma Ghost had to do was call her up and say hey you want to watch your kids and she could have taken a step forward and been solid and watched your kids (laughs) i don't know why i mean death means nothing in the charmed universe absolutely nothing i don't know why prue never showed up they're like oh prue doesn't want to show up because we don't have the actress but otherwise she could just show up anytime it wouldn't have mattered (laughs) yeah yeah they could call prue and she could take a step forward and be solid and join them on their adventures can you imagine if they summoned prue like they summoned mom in this episode and then like they'd be like all right prue you need to help us uh, like be an arbiter for this decision okay hey prue what's up what's going on hey cool who brought my prue back from the dead Uh (laughs) yeah (laughs) nobody cares it's so ho-hum that they're moms in this episode (laughs) Like the tagline for Charmed as a series should just be "Death is cheap" because it yeah. is—it's in so many ways. Like death, death is doesn't... cheaper by the coven. Yeah, <laughs> cheaper by the coven. It's like when people are dead, they don't stay dead, and when someone dies, they don't care about it. <laughs> Um, oh, uh, one of the first things that Grandma Ghost says, she's like mid-conversation when they summon her, and she goes, I'm busy! And they go, you're dead! Yeah, she's (laughs) Ah, apparently... (laughs) She's apparently having an afterlife gossip session. (laughs) Who's she she gossiping with? Hitler? (laughs) It's Hitler, right? Her Her best friend, Hitler? (laughs) (laughs) Recording right now, thinking about making it serious. You know, not many people know this, but Zephyr was a terrific dancer. This is, um, so this is another example of, like, nothing happens off screen. Mm -hmm. So, like, when she shows up, like, they're like, hey, we're trying to convince Piper to do this wickening. And she's like, oh, we already had a wickening. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, no, that was the other one. This is for Chris. And like, what? I thought he was, (laughs) he was an adult. No, no, that was a whole time travel future son. This is the other son. By the way, she had another son. Here he is. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Yeah, like, you'd think that she, they would have called her before then to see this, or she Nobody could have her. looked down to have seen it from the afterlife. Like it Looked up from hell, you mean? Yeah, you're right. Looked up from hell. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah, the fact that nobody told her she didn't find out till just now. They could have fudged that. I know you didn't have the actress until then, like for whatever reason she's a guest star, but like, you know, they could have pretended like she knew about it or been like Yeah. You know, some line about it to so that she's not just now finding out. Yeah, it seems ridiculous. Well it's ridiculous. They have to do the wickening. Because that's a witch's compass for good, apparently, yeah. whatever that means. I thought they had yeah. 48 hours to depend if they're good or evil or not. I thought that yeah. was how that was determined. <laughs> it's whatever. <laughs> There's many rules that don't come back in the show. 
she is <laughs> I'm just gonna say stone cold bitch in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Grandma Ghost. <laughs> Really, uh, you can really tell where the, where the girls got it from, being raised by Grandma Ghost. <laughs> She's really the, the one hag to rule, the, rule them all. <laughs> she is horrible, and even to them in this episode, she makes a really dumb decision later. <laughs> what, what did she say? Like, she compared men, and this is a different episode, but she's like, men are like utensils, you wash them, you use them, wash them, put them in a drawer, and <laughs> until you need them again. <laughs> The, you, you boil and mash them, stick them in the stew. In <laughs> What's turtles, Brussels? What's turtles, huh? Man, she's a a sexist asshole. Um, so at least it's story. It's important to the story in this, though. She never, learns no lessons. No. Is not called out on anything. No, and she really should be by the end of it. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah. So, uh, sweet baby Wyatt shows up <laughs> and, uh, orbs Chris's pacifier to him and gets scolded yeah. by a grandma ghost. This is so bad, too, because it's clear the kid does not give a shit about what's going on. He's just kind of staring off in the distance. Like, oh, Wyatt. <laughs> like, oh, you, are you criticizing the acting of the two-year-old or, <laughs> or for all the Criticizing the fact they couldn't get a kid to at least look like they meant to do something because <laughs> what it, how do you get a kid to do that like he's a toddler i've seen other things with kids <laughs> that at least look like they're intentionally doing something <laughs> get less brain dead kids on charmed Ugh. or at least get someone who can get a kid to at least look in the direction they want them to i could be wrong did they have twins playing wyatt let me look because usually they they do that not only for um they have twins playing the children on shows, not only because uh, the uh, working hours, yeah. but also because um, oftentimes one of them's better at one thing than the other. That's what they did with Mary Kate and Ashley. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just looking. Yeah, there were twins playing Wyatt Halliwell. Apparently, neither of them could look like they knew what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Two talentless children. <laughs> <laughs> Never go anywhere. I think it's also that uh, that, that the... baby Chris was uh, acting yeah. circles Their around them. <laughs> baby Wrangler also dropped to the ball or whatever. <laughs> baby Wrangler. On <laughs> One of them is named Jason Simmons. It's <laughs> like uh, the guy who played Logan. <laughs> nice. Uh, Jason and Christopher Simmons were both. Uh, there was only one uh, child playing the baby Chris, and it was. This is a great name, Maximilian Kesmodel <laughs> or Kesmodel. I don't know, Maximilian Kesmodel. Yes. <laughs> I think if that's the best they can do, they shouldn't have done it at all. <laughs> they should have just got rid of these kids. Let's just replace them with CGI children. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so he, he orbs Chris's pacifier to him, gets scolded, um, and he orbs out. And uh, they're like, hey, what happened to him? And then Paige is like, eh, he probably orbed himself up to his room. Probably. probably. They're not too concerned finding out if he did or not. No, he could be dead right now. Well, maybe. We'll find out later. <laughs> we'll find out. Nobody seems very concerned about this kid with this uncontrolled orbing power to go wherever this he wants in the world. Teleported anywhere. You think Paige would be rushing up the stairs to make sure that's where he is? He, not could, just, uh. he could have teleported to the core of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> So he's kind of acting out a lot lately. He's sad because Leo's not around since the separation. Um, his little, little brother's getting all the attention. So Grandma Ghost, uh, apparently Wyatt's feelings were hurt. We know this from the dialogue, <laughs> apparently. Um, so Grandma Ghost goes to apologize to him. When she goes upstairs, she finds um, a guy in a fuzzy hood and a mask hanging out with Wyatt. <laughs> it's like a weird textured furry hood. Yeah. And uh, Wyatt's got, like, this uh, Sue Storm shield around himself, protecting himself from the uh, from the hooded man. Uh, comedy ensues. The, the hooded man blasts Grandma Ghost away with lightning, <laughs> knocks her out somehow. <laughs> Apparently, as a ghost, she can be knocked unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> Why did they do that? They don't have to knock her out. <laughs> <laughs> Glass jaw Grandma Ghost. They could have the lightning go through her. As a ghost, maybe she didn't, like, get there in time to, like, get rid no, of the hooded guy. No, because she guy. took that step forward, now she's solid, so you can beat her up. <laughs> they don't seem to, like, be consistent or remember when people are dead or not in this show. 
Yeah, or, or what any what's it mean? Like there should does, be like does a it mean reason you could just come back whenever yeah. and be solid. Yeah, like she you, could just live with them. She overstays her welcome. I think if we're going to introduce this solid thing, like maybe that should be dangerous. <laughs> like maybe yeah, or if, like if she it, gets destroyed as a solid ghost, she's just out of existence. Yeah, they could do that, or say, like, it takes energy to be solid, so, like, you can't do it all the time, or they have to pull some strings, get some favors from the elders, or something where it's like, you can't do it all the time for frivolous reasons, yeah. which is what they do constantly. Or what if the stakes are, like, pretty much nothing? Yeah, this t will they have a wickening or not? <laughs> which they've established in canon doesn't mean shit. Yeah. <laughs> Cut to Piper at P3. Who's talking to some rando who works there. We never see him again. It's just so she can, like, allude to things without saying things. Um, she's like, hey, you know how... It's just so she can talk about raising the prices of ginger ale. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll become rich in the ginger ale market. <laughs> uh, she says, you know, people live life according to a higher power, where I'm trying to love life without any powers. <laughs> and the show thought this was very clever. <laughs> We all know who the real higher power is, though. It's me, Austin! <laughs> Whoa! He was, the, he was the highest elder all along. Yeah. <laughs> Vince McMahon in one of those stupid velvet, faux velvet robes. <laughs> you deserve to be screwed! You deserve to be screwed! Um, Phoebe comes in. Um, she could mention, oh, they got rid of that, that hooded guy, by the way, he's gone. <laughs> I guess I should mention he's not still attacking them. Um, Phoebe comes in, uh, but before she tells Piper about this, she's like, hey, I want a Reader's Choice Award. <laughs> yeah. Gotta tell you about that. Ugh. <laughs> she has a really ugly outfit on in this episode, by the way. It's some sort of, like, um, tweed plaid <laughs> jacket or something it's very stiff material i don't like it it's not her usual ugly outfit i'm sure some people think it's fine i just personally think it's ugly <laughs> uh i like the sisterly love as phoebe comes in piper can barely hold herself back from strangling <laughs> <laughs> just immediate scowl and it's like what's wrong <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. She got, Here's how this exchange goes. I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. So Phoebe's like, hey, what's up? I want a Reader's Choice Award. Oh, by the way, something weird happened when we summoned Grandma Ghost. <laughs> Piper, <laughs> why'd you summon that bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much the reaction. You'd think it'd be like, oh, it'd be nice to go see Grandma. And you now it's, oh, I hate her. What? Why? <laughs> it's, I love that, like... She, they're so blasé about it now. She's just like, why'd you bring grandma back? I don't have time for this. Our our dead grandmother who yeah. raised us visiting. She, she visited like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> she still didn't notice Chris existed. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he was uh, he was at magic school. Hobie's with his mother, you know. <laughs> She, she, she's she's complaining about the normal life thing. She doesn't want uh, all of this shit going on. Uh, she doesn't want to do the wickening. All this stuff. Um, she storms home, sees Grandma Ghost, who's like, "Hey, sweetie, don't sweetie me." Well, Phoebe eventually gets to the point that the why it was attacked. She, you yeah. mean is this trying to tell me? Yeah, I guess she didn't storm home because Grandma Ghost was there. She it was because of that and Grandma Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> so two fur there. Then she goes into ultra Leo mode. Yeah, yeah. She goes like Leo now. Yeah, now. Like, Come sit yeah. here. Bad. Sit. <laughs> Rubs his nose in his shit. <laughs> no, that's no. <laughs> Hits him with a newspaper. <laughs> yeah, so Grandma Ghost is like, are you sure about summoning Leo? Uh, he's got these struggles going on with good and evil, you know, because of killing Gideon and all. <laughs> and then, like, she's like, ah, and she's like, eh, Phoebe and Paige filled me in. <laughs> like, oh, so she didn't know about Chris, but they're like, oh, you will not believe what Leo is doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, in between the time that she found, either in between the time that she found out about Chris and the Wickening, they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, Leo killed some people. <laughs> or before that, they're like, Leo killed some people, but we don't think you should know about your grandson. <laughs> <laughs> what happened Charm? yeah <laughs> priorities <laughs> grandma ghost is like you know if you do that wickening 
It'll help ward off demon attacks. And Piper's like, well, I didn't pre- protect Wyatt. <laughs> <laughs> Almost got you killed again or whatever with that last time with that necromancer or whatever the hell that plot was. <laughs> Yeah. I don't remember what happened there. It had something know. to do with Grandma Ghost. Yeah. And then they're like, hey, why don't we bind their powers? Like, no, I had a normal life, but with magic babies. <laughs> you could solve all your problems, Piper. Mm. Um, actually, the magic is really what protected Wyatt there, though, because, like, even no, Hood Man would have. Though, because we find out later, it's all because of the baby. He's that darn. He tricked me. He tr- oh, that darn Wyatt. Yeah. It's devious, devious Wyatt. They call him Wicked Wyatt. <laughs> wicked Wyatt. <laughs> <laughs> the Wicked Wyatt of the West. <laughs> <laughs> Paige is at magic school uh, with Wyatt. He's trying to figure. She's trying to figure out what's going on with this uh, hooded demon. And uh, there's a rando student teacher or something there. Like he's not quite a teacher, but he's yeah. he's a student. So I think he's learning or something. Yeah, I guess he's a student, but we see him teaching later, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think he's a student teacher, or like a, a teacher's aide, like, or something, where he's, like, yeah. learning. His name's Ben. Big Ben. <laughs> Big Ben. <laughs> Shredded. Uh, yeah, I love it. He, like, they're just talking like we should know who this is. You're like, who the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. Just, he seems like an amalgam of some of Paige's other boyfriends. <laughs> yeah, he is kind of Henry-ish. Yeah. A little bit, maybe like a. Uh, I'm Henry, uh, the teen Henry. I'm working at the ca- the cashier. He's a Simpsons teen. Yeah, <laughs> he hadn't quite hit puberty yet. Yeah, yeah. He's apparently 21. He's uh, fairly young compared to her, I guess. I don't know what age mm-hmm. she is at this point, but apparently mm-hmm. too young for her. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, he's helping her look some stuff up uh, in some books. Uh, Wyatt orbs Chris away. <laughs> yeah. Then it takes good old Big Ben a while to mention it. Oh, oh yeah. golly gosh, Paige, I don't know if you want to hear this, but I, I think the baby's gone. And she goes, ha, and then blasts him away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See his head rolling down the hallway. <laughs> yeah, so uh, luckily for them, he just orbed his brother not into traffic, but into the <laughs> arms of Victor Halliwell, or Victor Bennett, I should say. He's not Halliwell anymore no. after he was the first It was the Victor. other guy. <laughs> <laughs> they changed whose last name it was. I keep wanting to call him Victor Halliwell. I didn't remember his last name until I looked it up just a minute ago and then forgot. Yeah. Victor Bennett. You gotta love Charm. They're like, all right, the Halliwell name's like too important to be his <laughs> anymore. So now it's the mother's. <laughs> Whatever happened to women supporting women? <laughs> uh, I love that. Like, what if, um, <laughs> what if he took her surname? Like he was Halliwell, but it was her surname. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be progressive. Yeah. Maybe he did before the divorce, and then he went back to Bennett. Mm. Anyway, he shows up. He at was the a house. different guy back then. <laughs> he shows up at the house, and he goes, "Who brought my grandson back from the dead?" <laughs> uh, Grandma Ghost is like, "What are you doing here? Wickedings are only for magical family members." B i t c h. <laughs> She's yep. terrible to him through this this episode. She's really a uh, um, racist against the Muggle in the family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel like if we knew more about the story, like I don't remember exactly why he wasn't involved with their. It's because Grandma Ghost was a bitch and didn't want him involved. Could, That's it's what happened. Her fault. Okay. Yeah, they allude to it in this episode. I think they went into it more in a different one, but it was because like he wanted to be involved, but she said no. Because he wasn't magical and she wanted it to stay. So he, right. she deprived him of uh, raising his family, which they, they very much do not go into much in this episode. Uh, no, like he, that's something he that should be a lot more angry at her than with some of the conversations they have in this when that's the case. I get yeah. the feeling, though, like the way they portrayed him when he is the other guy as Victor Halliwell, he was just more of a deadbeat dad. Yeah, he was just like, uh, he went off with the secretary philanderer, kind of gives money to solve his problems kind of thing. And then when he turned to Victor Bennett, he's the father who wanted to be involved. Yeah, he was was just sort of a lame dad. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so um, Piper's complaining about this orbing thing, like, "Ah, he's orbing his brother everywhere, I don't know how to solve this because I'm stupid. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah. And Victor is like, well, isn't that just boys being boys? <laughs> there will always be sibling rivalry. Yeah. 
<laughs> you classic idiot. boys versus boys being boys orbing each other around. You know, Chris, look at what he was wearing. He was just asking to be orbed out of there. <laughs> boys will be boys. <laughs> And then, like, you know, if one of them killed the other, the other would come from the future and be like, hey, um, you know, Chris and I were playing PlayStation together, and then <laughs> he died suddenly. I was like, I better go back to the past and find out what happened. <laughs> Why did I die? <laughs> <laughs> um, because he says there will always be sibling rivalry. Um, then some shitty music plays and a terrible YouTube show starts with a, a couple of annoying fucks. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding um <laughs> inspires grandma ghost <laughs> she says um <laughs> she says uh she can uh do a spell uh, in her little black book in the attic um that will uh resolve this sub- sibling rivalry um they go up to the attic and uh this is a book of spells that she used on the girls when they were young apparently she's just like ah, eh, it's too hard raising children <laughs> <laughs> that's my magic sound effect <laughs> like i dream of genie just yeah um and then victor brings up a good point he's like why don't you just talk to them just keep <laughs> casting spells why don't you just like be a parent <laughs> that's not how i do things i like being deceptive yeah like she's like she's such a bitch like she's like well you weren't there i was the one raising them it's like well well you wouldn't let me be there how was i supposed to raise them Right. Um, a lot of a lot of good points are brought up that they kind of brush over. Do not call Grandma Ghost into account about. Very half acidly have something at the end, but it's not. I don't feel like they they give her character what's coming to her. I don't think she she gets no um, the come up and she deserves. Yeah, she deserves a lot, especially by the end of the episode. <laughs> yeah, Phoebe uh, decides this is the time. Bitch out, Nick Lachey, ninety eight degrees himself. <laughs> yeah. It's um, like, and she like whines about the award and says like, "Oh, it's not like you." He said he was gonna go accept the award on her behalf. It's like, "Well, it's not like you wrote the article." It's like, actually, I did write the article that they're giving the award for. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was a sweet moment. Drink it in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> humiliation of Phoebe. Uh, for people who don't remember, Nick Lachey was a ghost writer that was brought in uh, to uh, help Phoebe while she was on sabbaticals, going through some issues. Mm-hmm. Um, so, as far as anyone knows, this is Ask Phoebe's column. Uh, but she's like, "Ah, oh, man, a penis haver can't write my column." Mm-hmm. Um, the it great love of. story between her and Ninety Eight Degrees. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, we got to do that episode. He was in it where um. They they uh changed time. I think this was the Lady Godiva one. So like men ruled the world, and they all wore like terrible suits and women in babushkas and stuff. While he was in charge <laughs> of the paper because it was a patriarchal society. <laughs> <laughs> really stupid. Yeah, she's uh he's like, well, you're on sabbatical, so that's why I'm accepting this award. Uh, and then she's like, ah, you didn't write it. Yes, I did. Oh, boom. Back in the attic, uh, Paige and Wyatt orb in, uh, Grandma Ghost pushes Dad, uh, Dad Halliwell, <laughs> the, uh, mm-hmm. Victor Bennett, he pu- she pushes the dad out of the way, uh, because he's like, oh, hey, Wyatt, what, yeah, out of the way, <laughs> you gotta cast a spell. <laughs> what a bitch. <laughs> So she casts this spell, but of course it goes wrong. Uh, takes the sibling rivalry out of uh, the children and puts it into the girls, which apparently makes them act like uh, uh, little children. <laughs> mm-hmm. So they can all do baby but, voices. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't understand how that makes sense. Like, that's not sibling rivalry. That's just making them babies. <laughs> how is this? A- the only difference, the only difference between them now and them when they're not, they don't have the spell on them is that they use baby voices. Mm-hmm. They're still bitching at Especially each other. Like they Alyssa always Milano, do. Cause Alyssa yeah. Milano loves going into baby voice. <laughs> she loves that baby voice. <laughs> that's the mermaid voice. That's the baby voice. That's the, I don't know. She's still, she's done this a lot. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think they know what sibling rivalry is. Cause... Well, it's because they're always bitching at each other anyway. Yeah. Like, they can still have that and not be babies. <laughs> they become witchy babies. <laughs> Make our nightmares come true. 
Because Dad Leslie is such a jerk face. Oh, please, you so like him. I do not. Do you too. Uh, yeah, so they're complaining at each other like, Do the baby voice. It's so dumb. But this is the point where, like, I thought maybe this episode could have been something if we had, like, Victor and Grandma Ghost have to team up. Since yeah. they're all incapacitated like this, but it, yeah, it, remove the them from the formula, it would have been pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and like, and that would have been kind of an interesting dynamic since they don't like each other that much, but they have to work together. But the episode drops the ball on that pretty hard. Doesn't really go there. It feels like this episode had one or two too many elements because mm-hmm. they had some ideas, but like there was so much you don't really get to to delve deep into any of it. No. So they're kind of brushing the surface of some of these issues, which were nice that they finally got to them because they were like something that meant something, I think. But it just they didn't have a lot of time. Yeah. Um, while they're fighting, uh, the hood guy orbs in and uh, and they scream and run away. <laughs> uh, Paige throws her shoes at him. <laughs> Pretty good. Because, you know, they have sibling rivalry, so they're idiots. <laughs> they're idiots just like uh the wyatt twins <laughs> <laughs> i don't understand like why did that make them not remember what their powers are i don't know because they were children make... they don't know how to use their powers except they had the witch talk yeah except baby wyatt apparently can like orb people around like he wants to and kill them yep well their powers were bound when they were children though wyatt's isn't so I guess they wouldn't know if they were reverted back, even though they know all this stuff from present day. So I don't know why yeah, they wouldn't know. Their they were using their pa- <laughs> They were using their powers downstairs, though. I guess just in the moment they didn't think to use them. <laughs> yeah, because sibling rivalry makes you <laughs> too scared or dumb to use your powers. Yeah, Grandma goes scares the the hooded demon off, uh, and <laughs> she, also and, she uh, does a throw a knife to ooh, ooh. <laughs> <A> knife. <laughs> and. Uh, and then Victor's like, any more bright ideas? <laughs> <laughs> I do I do enjoy him bitching at her. That's satisfying. <laughs> yeah. He's really the hero of this episode. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so downstairs, the girls are bitching at each other, using their powers on each other. Um, Paige orbs out uh, in a huff. Uh, Phoebe goes to accept her award. No one can stop each other from uh, just casually leaving. <laughs> this is a and problem with them. Until two seconds later, Grandma Ghost freezes Piper, so she could have freezed them all before this happened. How, this makes Piper's freezing power a little less special, right? That you could just, like, read a spell off of her book and freeze someone? Yeah. No, Piper doesn't use that anymore now. It's just all the lazy explode hands. She didn't freeze anyone after she could explode anything? I thought she still did the freezing thing. Not, not that often. I think most of the time is just the lazy, ugh, explode someone. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I'm not saying she never did, but a lot of the time it was just that. <laughs> well, two-thirds of them uh, have left in a huff to do things that are inane, so nothing's different. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so when Piper's frozen, uh, Victor is like, Oh, what if the spell backfires? It's going to be permanent. Your other spell didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, you might want to be a little more careful after that went so wrong. <laughs> yeah. They're like, well, we should take the kids to magic school because at this point in time, it's supposed to protect people from demons and not be the demon hideout. Depends on the season. But at this point, if you go to magic school, it's protected. Supposedly. um, (laughs) Yeah. So they're like, we should take the kids to magic school. And like, uh, dad's like, hey, I could take them there. And uh, and grandma ghost is like, no, that's for magical people only. Filthy muggle. (laughs) Non-magical people can't go there, except for when Leo teaches magic and he doesn't have any powers. That didn't really make any sense. Whatever. (laughs) How did Leo get there when he didn't have powers? Like, did he have to take the magic train and the pillar? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Platform nine and three quarters and a third. It's a different one. Um, (laughs) So uh, she's like, Leo's going to take them. 
The guy who murdered people, I think, is a better choice than the magicless dad, <laughs> the muggle dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Dark Leo is uh, in the underworld at the moment, uh, trying to squeeze some information out of the seer played by Charisma Carpenter. Yeah. I forgot they had her in a few episodes, actually. I, yeah. I, I remember the big one that she was in, but I forgot she was there for a little bit. Or she appeared a few times. Yeah. It wasn't very much. It was like maybe three episodes. Mm. Um, she was replacing the seer that was played by the lady from Baywatch. Remember Which the one? one? She was in uh, Baywatch Hawaii when they had the uh, the one who everyone acted like she was wrong, but she was totally right with all of the oh. like rules of the rival thing. Right. Okay. Anyway, only you and me know what we're talking about here. But anyway, <laughs> uh, she was killed. So now we have a new seer who I think is, I think they give her a name later, but she might just be called seer here. What, mm. what does IMDb say? <laughs> the seer. Yeah. Cool. The seer. Actually, I think that was also the name of the um, the lady that was working with Cole um, with the, the whole evil baby storyline. <laughs> right. There was, there's been many just the seers. So it's really... Yeah. A seer rather than the seer, unless it's just a title that they hold and just go through whenever one dies. Yeah, we see how normal Leo is right now when he starts roughing her up because he doesn't like her answers. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> "Oh, tell me, <laughs> tell me where she is." He turns into Batman, just ah, Joker. Yeah. <laughs> Charisma Carpenter is only wearing like a bra thing as a top, and then he like throws her, and <laughs> you see the stunt woman's got like just this big cloth wrapping around her midriff. Which yeah, she has match like a cloth all. midriff, and I don't know why that is. Maybe it was to protect some padding, or like so she doesn't like get like burned from sliding across the floor. Maybe. Maybe you think they would have just had some crash mats there because it's not like we could see very well. <laughs> yeah, I remember that looking really bad, and I think I might have put it in the video at some point too. Maybe not, but that that one stuck out with me because it was pretty obviously like a stunt woman with a midriff that made a cloth. <laughs> yeah, it wrinkles in a weird way, mm -hmm. and I don't think the tone exactly matches her either. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> And there's no belly button. So. <laughs> um, but he's trying to figure out who's after his son. Uh, and uh, she's like, hey, uh, maybe maybe I don't trust you because of that whole, you know, you killed some people. And he's like, no more elders are going to die by my hands, but I can't say the same for demons. <laughs> and she's like, do you even know the difference anymore? Ooh, the egg. <laughs> This storyline with Leo, I liked at some points, but in this case, like in this episode, it seems a little try hard. I don't think Leo is a very edgy character, but I did mm. like his whole like he he had to do a a great evil to to stop something bigger by killing mm. Gideon and stuff like that. So he felt he was doing the right thing, and I, and I felt that was something um morally ambiguous in Charmed, where it's a show where they say people are genetically good or evil, so that was pretty different yeah. for them, I think. And they could have utilized it a lot better, but it's charmed, so of course. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind them doing this like dark, darker stuff with Leo, but I don't buy him yeah, as but a dark it's not character. Very so when good, like what they're doing yeah. here, it's just him going around and being a jerk to some seer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, him like trying to choke her out and like, do you even know the difference anymore? It's like <laughs> I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. They, I think it was actually better done in the uh, the stupid multiple arms Piper episode, <laughs> where they get like the uh, the god powers at a wedding or something. It's him and her, his Hindu <laughs> gods or something, and he kills James Avery. At, at least the ending of that episode, I thought that was that was done better than than what they're doing here, which is again like one element too many. There's so much going on, you don't get a lot of time to really delve into this issue. You see me as a god, right, Smithies? Absolutely, sir. You'd kneel before me? Boy, would I. She's like, well, you'll find the answers in my big gray cauldron. <laughs> His CGI head. How can I head trust that? Up. And she goes, the pool never lies. The pool never lies. <laughs> <laughs> and then it says, try again later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, his big CGI head floats up out of it. It looks really bad. Yeah. Leo's like, that's not it, right? That's a temp effect. The real <laughs> one would be put in later. <laughs> I think at the time in the uh, mid to mid 2000s, it was it was fine. Now it hasn't held up very well. But for like TV then, I think it was okay. Yeah, if you had like a really crappy TV with poor reception. <laughs> <it's okay. laughs> 
<laughs> You're ruining the magic, Phelan. <laughs> All right, so um, that's going on, and he's like, what? What does this mean? Uh, meanwhile, back at the house, Grandma Ghost is talking to Piper, and she asks the most confusing fucking line, I think, ever in the- well, not the most confusing ever in the show, but one of the worst ones as far as, like, them forgetting their own continuity. She's mm-hmm. like, Piper, do you remember when we had the talk? The witch talk. <laughs> <laughs> as if the show is forgotten- the whole premise of the show and this episode. The fact that they didn't yep. know about magic when they were kids. They never had the witch talk, you stupid show. <laughs> Why would she say that? Unless there was some memory wiping going on that I'm forgetting, which is horrifying. I don't think that happened, though. <laughs> I think they did. Um, They had that episode. I think it was that 70s episode when they time traveled back and they saw their childhood selves. They might have been using some magic. I don't Mm -hmm. think they ever had the witch talk, though. I don't think that happened. (laughs) I think they were too young to remember at that point. Either way, they forgot their own continuity. It's pretty bad. Yep. Well, that's a charm for you. (laughs) Why would they say it in this episode? So much of the plot revolves around the fact that the, the girls didn't know magic and they were raised by their 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 grandma i guess a normal childhood but the because no, of the magic no a magic childhood now that's the new canon <laughs> whatever <laughs> um she and piper have a good cry over something it's heartwarming i don't know they're talking about something yeah it, it's very hollow it's just <laughs> <laughs> trying to be meaningful and it's not <laughs> holly marie combs is good at crying but I don't remember to what end. It's not a very good scene. <laughs> Crocodile tears. <laughs> eh, <laughs> buy my pyramid scheme stuff. <laughs> eh. She's probably just collecting those tears because they're probably like this really potent poison she can use later on someone. <laughs> I'm lactating poison! Sick. The mailman looked at me side-eyed today and he's getting a dose of this. <laughs> eh. I can't believe that this that my MLM scheme tore this TV family apart. <laughs> All right, I'm getting kind of personal here. Okay, so <laughs> uh, <laughs> Leo shows up uh, and he sees Victor with the kids, and uh, he's looking kind of haggard. Leo's looking kind of haggard, and he's like, "Hey, you okay, man?" <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's like, "You're looking kind of." You're looking kind of bad, and and Piper's like, oh, be nice to Leo. And then Leo knows something is wrong. (laughs) Immediately, be nice to Leo. He's like, what's going on here? (laughs) Something's wrong with my wife. Why why is she all messed up like this? She's not supposed to be nice. (laughs) She's showing showing concern for me. Something is horribly wrong. Like, just a a couple hours ago, she was all, Leo, now! Leo, now! (laughs) And now she's like, hey, be nice to Leo. What what happened to my wife? (laughs) Yeah, this is not my Piper. kind of blows a off. Like, we're fixing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're like, hey, we think he's off. He's kind of spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think we should have him take the kids to magic school. And he gets kind of pissed off. Like, there's nothing wrong with me. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> yeah. We're all going to turn to floating torsos and orb away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he becomes a floating torso because the his the shot he's not he doesn't go past the sh- the end of the shot and so whew. yeah, <laughs> um, orbs away with the kids uh, to magic school. Uh, Grandma Ghost is like, all right, I'm gonna go get Paige. Make yourself useful. Get Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> and then he makes a face at her after she leaves. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Maybe he got the sibling rivalry spell put on. Him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grandma Ghost must have too. Yeah. <laughs> this is what happens when every character on your show is childish and idiotic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hard to tell the difference. Uh, Phoebe is at the award ceremony, uh, getting free drinks. She loves it. Uh, so she's yeah. she's uh, chugging the you know, drinks. Like a kid. <laughs> yeah, just like a kid. Um, <laughs> she's acting like a petty child, so again, nothing's different. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, so she's like, yeah, 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 stupid 98 degrees, I'm going to get this award. And he thinks that maybe she's drunk and going to embarrass herself. So he's like, hey, you know, I can still go up there and accept this award for you. Like trying to help her out. And she's like, yeah, uh, nice try. Yeah. She dashes up there and she's like, my fellow Decepticons, that's your new leader. <laughs> She puts the crown on, and yeah. then uh, Grandma Ghost comes in, crumbles her to dust. Yeah. <laughs> 
Grandma Goose, is that you? Here's a hint. <laughs> now I am the leader. <laughs> um, yeah, so she goes up and she calls it the bestest column in the world. <laughs> and then like, apparently yeah, this... that's normal Phoebe. Yeah, that's normal Phoebe. <laughs> Nothing's off. Um, apparently this award ceremony is treated like a press conference. Like, yeah. It's the like... Lady- one lady just gets like, I have a few questions <laughs> about your call. <laughs> I want to quiz you on. <laughs> like, it just seems like I want to make sure you didn't cheat on your test. <laughs> like, <laughs> she, yeah, she, yeah, she's like, she's got the hard questions. Uh, yeah. And she asks her about this and Phoebe doesn't seem to know what uh, is going on. She did not read this column that she was so pissed off that apparently she thought she wrote, but Nick Lachey wrote and it's like <laughs> did you not read it eventually or did you not look at what article you were winning this for that you're just yeah, it sounds yeah. like me I think like, at the very <laughs> least she'd be checking on her column to see that this guy isn't writing a bunch of crap <laughs> oh, I, it's a bunch of penis talk I ain't reading that <laughs> <laughs> misogyny <laughs> um, but Nick Lachey comes up and saves her ass <laughs> yeah he said, one day Phoebe gave me really good advice. They're like, ah, ha, ha, what's the real story? And then they leave. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, that sounds like a lie. And he's like, bye. <laughs> yup. <laughs> um, she jumps up in his arms to thank him, uh, acting like a little kid. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's what happened. At magic school, Paige calls uh that rando student teacher big out of class ben. big ben she calls up big ben uh out of class so that she could make out with him <laughs> and then she goes how old are you <laughs> yeah 21 oh he's like 21 and a half usual <laughs> how old was she at the time i'm just curious what so this was 2004 and i don't i don't remember how old Paige was supposed to be rose mcgowan was in 2004 31 okay so there was there was a bit of a difference there yeah i mean 21 i think is still old enough that it wouldn't be that creepy but he does look younger well i mean that was the point too and that's why she asks how old he is like oh oh (laughs) after making out with him though how old are you this isn't like you know (laughs) this isn't some pedophile shit right (laughs) because she's kitty so she she thought of it after like a kid i mean he is a student teacher (laughs) unless there's no age requirements in magic school i'm not sure i don't know (laughs) grandma ghost comes in and tell calls him a cradle robber or something yeah yeah um (laughs) (laughs) yeah good one (laughs) crickets (laughs) Uh, she takes her away end of that plot good good uh good. it was nice knowing you big ben <laughs> <laughs> yeah good plot he has to go his planet needs him they just wrote that in because Paige needed to do something this was the contractual we need to give you lines obligation is what was happening yeah. here we need to waste time with your character <laughs> leo is at magic school uh with the kids and then uh the hooded demon shows up and they have an emperor palpatine fight <laughs> Yeah. Good old safe magic school. I guess they're really hinting at that next season garbage magic school. Well, I think th- in this case, it, there was an exception because Wyatt was the one causing this. So it wasn't yeah, actually a demon. Possibly. But they should they should have maybe thought that was weird and been like, why? how did they get into magic school? Mm-hmm. I, mean, I guess it really depends on how the spell works and like whether demon leo has his own agency and his spoilers <laughs> you just said why it created him i didn't say it was evil leo now everyone knows <laughs> oh man yeah i spoiled a good like two seconds next anyway after the lightning fight it's demon leo <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and like grandma ghost comes in and goes out of the edge it was leo the whole time <laughs> Don't trust anyone, not even yourself. And Leo's pointing a gun at himself, badly photoshopped in. <laughs> and then Grandma Ghost goes back home and starts lying about what happened. She's like, yeah, I saw Leo going in and attacking Wyatt. And like, no, you didn't. You walked in after Leo zapped the other Leo and they were standing there. <laughs> yeah, and you'd think if she saw two Leos, she would know it was not their Leo. Yeah, but then she comes up with like all these 
twisted explanations to try and justify her bullshit. She's like, well, I mean, maybe it's your secret desire to kill your son that created this it's, uh, it's demon like, Leo. Like, It's, it's like hell? she's puppeteering this or something, like trying to make him think this to gaslight him or something. Yeah, <laughs> really? It would make way more sense if she had, was revealed as the villain. <laughs> The, yeah, and the, they're doing this. This was right after. So right after that scene, when like she sees it and is like bum bum bum, they cut back from. I think there was a commercial break, and then there's comedy music because <laughs> the girls are doing kid stuff. So like boop, 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 and then she comes in like ah, Leo's evil. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they're idiots because of the dumb spell I messed up. Uh, well, she shows up with Paige, and then she leaves. Um, she leaves the babies with uh the grown uh, the the um the baby with the women. with the grown up babies. <laughs> she leaves the yeah. babies with the grown up babies to take it. Like you take care of the kids and protect them. It's like you just saw them run away screaming. If <laughs> Demon Leo shows up, they ain't protect. They're gonna use that baby as a shield. <laughs> yeah, that would have been amazing. <laughs> it's all the dead zone. <laughs> Demon Leo's up there at the gun, and they hold the baby oh. as a shield. <laughs> Charmed One's career is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> they have the nuclear codes. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so Grandma Ghost is confronting Leo, and he's like, "Come on, you know that's like it's not me, right? There's another Leo. <laughs> you saw it." <laughs> and Victor defends him. Kind of weak though, because he's like, "I'm a dad too, so I know he'd never <laughs> do that." It's like, yeah, bad dads they don't exist. <laughs> Well, Grandma goes is like, you don't even know what's going on. You're not into magic and shit. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, she's yeah. terrible. <laughs> After she hurts Leo's feelings, <laughs> this whole, like, maybe it's your alter ego, huh? It's your true feelings. Uh, he takes off. Um, and uh, Grandma Ghost is like, well, we're not reversing this rivalry spell. <laughs> because Piper's just going to freak out. She's just going to be too emotional and an idiot. So we're going to leave them babies so they don't freak out about this. <laughs> Yeah, this is the most insane part for her. And, like, Victor's rightfully like, uh, no, I think we should make them normal again so they know it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's so stupid. This reasoning is just, like, Piper's psychotic, so let's not make them normal. <laughs> let's yeah. keep them emotionally stunted at the moment because yeah. they're more we useful. We want Piper as a child psychotic. We don't want her normal psychotic. <laughs> And Victor's like, well, don't I have a say in this? And she's like, oh, with weekends and holidays, you have a say, but with demons and magic, you don't. Like, she's so mean. Yeah. She's so mean. She's terrible. <laughs> she's the worst. <laughs> like, she says that and he just, he brushes it off. Like, he should have been more hurt by that, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, he is upset in the episode, but not to the point I think he should have been. Like, I think he should have gotten angry about this, and he didn't. He, he probably should have, yeah. I mean, to his credit, I guess he's still just trying to come up with a way to get this reversed. <laughs> because he's like, you know, we can't leave them like this. This is a terrible idea. You mm -hmm. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and then this was so silly, though, because he's like, I think we should get a third party. And she's like, <laughs> like, like who? My daughter? He's like, yeah, that's exactly who I was thinking. <laughs> Why would she say it like, like who, my daughter? She's an idiot. We would never call her. <laughs> they should have just done like a smash cut. Like, it's like, what? It's not like we're going to like summon my daughter, right? Bing, smash cut and she's there. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh. It would have been yeah. great if he had had some way to call her. So it wasn't Grandma Ghost that had to call her too. <laughs> so he's just well, then like. It would be even more meaningless that he could just say like, hey, dead wife, come back. And she's like, all right, here I am. <laughs> It's meaningless anyway. <laughs> why couldn't she? Why couldn't she hang out with her daughters growing up if she could just come as a ghost anyway, no matter yeah. what, whenever? I know. Yeah, exactly. There's she no special exemptions kids. made here. Like she just shows no. up. Eh, yeah. Why not? And apparently, there's no time limit set. They're like yeah. so, there's nothing would have mattered. But I just would have liked if he had one up to stupid grandma goes since she's so terrible in this episode like <laughs> maybe we just see that he had like found the spell and he's like and she's like well there's no one who's gonna side with you as magic is it oh isn't there and he like you see he used something to call her <laughs> yeah like he 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 got an ancient artifact 
<laughs> like, yeah. He's like the dad on the new charmed, like Indiana Jones, like he stole this artifact. <laughs> yeah, like maybe, yeah, this is some side quest he had done, like on his off time. And he's like, oh, I don't know anything about magic. Bitch. Yeah. And then holds it up. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, look, what I got here, this lets me call someone from the afterlife, and then he calls his wife. <laughs> I feel like this should have been the central focus of the episode and done something like that instead of all these little side quests. Like, minimize mm -hmm. what the girls are doing in the episode. Don't have these things with Nick Lachey and the stuff at P3 and the stuff at Magic School. Just have them in the living room and have it be about the parents talking about how the kids were raised, their regrets, stuff like that. Because I think that's the strongest parts of the episode when uh, yeah. when they discuss, like, they weren't there for their kids. Like, there was a, a great part where um, where uh, Patty, that was the, the mom's name, right? <laughs> Patty so. Yeah. There was a great part where Patty was, uh, she was talking about how, like, okay, so why did you summon me? Because, like, raising teenagers is kind of, like, out of both of our areas of expertise. Like, they weren't their parents when they became teenagers. All they know yeah. is them when they were when they were babies. Yeah. So like, I thought I that was interesting. I don't know why they're calling them teenagers though, because they're acting like they're supposed to be little children or something. Yeah, they are acting like they're about the age they were when they died, maybe a yeah. little younger. Like, is that how they're supposed to be when they? Were they were teens? acting like they were like ten years old, <laughs> younger. Yeah. But they're like a completely oblivious ten year olds because they hear these arguments going on and they're just like dad, 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 in the other room constantly it's like you know when i heard arguments and as a kid i would think something about them i didn't just go in the other room dad, dad, dad. yeah like they, and I, I feel like they're acting like very very young but even then like kids aren't kids aren't Idiot. idiots yeah, yeah kids aren't idiots so like if you they could have had them, like, hear it and be like, Mom, Dad, why are you fighting? And, like, act really immature about it, but still have some emotional weight to it. You don't have to have them walking around like, duh, 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 like they're going to walk off a cliff any yeah. moment. Or well, Grandma, Dad, why are you fighting? <laughs> or Grandma, Dad, you know, like. So they could have walked in and, like, seen this, and that could have, be like, because they're so upset over it, they have to comfort them, and it's like, you know, this is something we never really got to do. Mm -hmm. because uh because i'm dead <laughs> so yeah uh i don't know they could have done so much more with this plot that like it, it there was something there but they mm -hmm. just went the, the stupid route with it rather than something better yeah. crafted <laughs> really like victor and patty like they should have had to team up because grandma goes has gone so insane <laughs> they had to get rid of her they have to drop a house on her <laughs> That would have been an acceptable ending to this. That was episode. the series finale of the show as they drop a house on Grandma Ghost. <laughs> Perfect. There's a scene uh, in between some of this stuff uh, where Leo goes back to Charisma Carpenter um, to find out if evil Leo is really him, mm -hmm. and uh, and she's like, "You're just gonna like." kill me <laughs> you're just gonna choke me out again um but i guess she decides she's gonna help him and she's like put your i'm gonna put my finger in this gray cauldron juice and poink and then yeah. we don't get they never cut back to that i don't know if maybe that was something that was a plot thread they got to later or what but you yeah. never see that again yeah <laughs> he never mentions it <laughs> no <laughs> mom ghost uh, agrees that they should reverse the spell because keeping them kids is stupid <laughs> yeah and then Here's Grandma Ghost's next trick. She goes, how dare you guys? And she goes home. Well, I think, okay, t to be fair, no. I think the thing that upset her was because they're like, well, we're the parents. And she uh -huh. was the one that, that raised them. But she them. That's what storms her off until the very end of the episode to let her grandchildren possibly die well, they're screwed up by her yeah. stupid spell. Yeah, they don't have a very good follow through with this. <laughs> no, like... Okay, and if even they had, if she's like, upset about being overruled by them, she should still be concerned about the situation. <laughs> they don't have a follow-up scene with her and the, the, the parents to kind of um, conclude this storyline. Because there's something yeah. there with that. But she apologizes half-acidly to, uh, to Leo... Yeah. But she doesn't, like, have any, like, any sort of, like, conversation with them and be like, you know, like, 
we were their parents, but I but I raised them, and like the, you got you got to experience something that we didn't, and like their regrets and stuff like that, like things that are kind of touched on, but they don't get into. They could have really mm-hmm. tied a nice bow on this, and they yeah. just left it. But there also should have been accountability held towards her for flaking off yeah. and potentially oh, yeah. letting everyone die because oh, she's mad that they uh, um, that they didn't listen to her insane plan of leave them as babies or whatever they're supposed to be you know she she used them washed them and put them in a drawer until she needed him again <laughs> <laughs> so uh now mom and dad can chat uh they talk about a lot of things we, we just mentioned um so they go to take care of the annoying triplets <laughs> who just go like oh mom and rush over to her like Again, it's like, what What does this spell do? It's just like, they're so dumb, they don't realize anything's weird when their mom just comes downstairs. No, yeah, they don't care that their mom's there. Um, I don't know what Paige feels about this whole situation either, because she didn't grow up with any of them. Her mom mm-hmm. gave her up, and then, like, as a child, that if she was more childlike, that would certainly, in knowing that information, she would feel hurt by this. They could have yeah. had something with that if this episode was more focused around this plot element. Paige is just left flapping in the wind in this one (laughs) yeah there's one part where grandma ghost is yelling at victor and like he says something about Paige calling him because to be there and like what is Paige's relationship with him really (laughs) right i don't remember what they if they've had any because yeah like he's not her biological dad didn't grow up with him so i don't know like i don't remember what their introduction was or if they have any sort of right relationship between Mm -hmm. them yeah yeah does this be interesting that Paige, out of any of them was the one she's the one that cares even even when she was starting to become kind of a hag by this point but she's the one that cares more than the others Mm -hmm. ghost mom just casts a spell that she randomly knows that fixes this and she's like i just thought of this when i was nine and it works (laughs) i guess like what (laughs) There is a lot of correcting sibling rivalry spells gone wrong when she was nine. <laughs> she, yeah, when she was nine, she was just like, oh, I hate this sibling rivalry. Blah, 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 blah. Well, maybe she just had to come up with spells at a young age to fix her stupid mother's mistakes. <laughs> well, her mom apparently had her when she was like 12, so she was like raised <laughs> with a baby, basically. <laughs> with her fucking creep of a dad. <laughs> it's like a pedophile, glad he's dead. <laughs> yeah. But dead, dead. You know, real dead. They didn't bring his ghost back. <laughs> yeah, that only works when you're the woman in the family. They don't bring the the guys back. No. It's women ghosts supporting women. <laughs> men are only warlocks and evil. Yeah. Because this relates to Piper's children, they'll actually do something. <laughs> <laughs> so um, all the girls go to stake out the kids' room, waiting for evil Leo to show up. Um... He does show up, they throw a potion at him, but it doesn't work. And he kidnaps Wyatt. And they really don't freak out like I would think they would. Like, they just go downstairs like, oh, my kid's kidnapped. (laughs) Yeah. Holly Marie Combs sounded sick to me. She did, yeah. Sounded like she was fighting a cold a few times because her voice gets weird. Yeah, her voice sounded really weird. She sounded like she was really low energy. I think that's part of why the scene comes off very weird, but even the dialogue doesn't really Well, you could still have more energy about the baby being gone. (laughs) She doesn't need to just be like, Well, I don't know why it's gone, I guess. I think Holly Marie Combs didn't give a shit about putting energy in. She's like, I feel bad today, so I'm just going to say the lines and get it done. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a producer. I'm allowed to do this. Who cares? Yeah. No, I mean, look, I mean, I shouldn't. Why it's going? You know, <laughs> it sucks when an actor's sick. Like, you know, they don't get sick days, but it does feel like she just she she could afford not to care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ghost mom is like this whole situation seems familiar. <laughs> hey Piper, when you were a baby, you used to have like bad dreams and stuff because of uh, the da- uh, me- us getting the divorce. So I guess that means that Wyatt's having bad dreams that bring things to life. I don't know how this relates. <laughs> Quite a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> you had bad dreams. I think that's what's going on here. Why it's having bad dreams and why and evil Leo is the bad dream. You could just pull that out of your ass. None of that. None of this supports what she's talking about, except for the fact that that happens to be what it is. Yeah. Leo comes in and like agreeing, but like with this explanation it makes no sense because he comes <laughs> in and says like, yeah, and I'm the bad guy, which is why he made me the demon. 
But Wyatt blames himself. For what happened with Gideon. Yeah. So Wyatt blames himself, but Leo's the bad guy. Like, well, does Wyatt blame himself or does he blame Leo? <laughs> I think, yeah, I don't know why he thinks that Leo Leo's the bad guy. I think he, the idea here is that, like, he thinks that he uh, forced his parents apart so the evil Leo is, is kidnapping him, putting him in danger, so that will in turn bring his parents back together. I don't know mm-hmm. why he made Leo the yeah, evil but- one. Yeah, the, yeah. the explanation that Leo is the bad guy and that's why he's the demon doesn't make sense. You think it'd be Wyatt if Wyatt views himself Yeah, like as older the Wyatt, they could have brought him back as yeah. part of the storyline or something. Yeah, it could have been older Wyatt and that would have made sense with Leo's explanation. <laughs> yeah. Like at least part that part, <laughs> not the part where he says he's the villain. <laughs> <laughs> Evil Leo has taken Wyatt to the underworld. I don't know how they know that they're there. How do they find them? Because it's the end of the episode and we gotta wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, it's not like they're like, oh, we need to go scrying for them or do something. They just show up there. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. evil Leo is with Wyatt in the Underworld and he's like, this the is The Underworld's a small together. place too, right? It's like <laughs> yeah. that well, one Well, they only cave. have the one set. <laughs> yeah, it's the cave set and maybe that seer area and like, there's two rooms down there. So <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, evil Leo summons some demons. Uh, Leo and Piper, the real Leo and Piper. The real Leo! <laughs> Whoa. Well, the real Leo, please stand up. <laughs> back to Wyatt and the real Leo and Piper. <laughs> And me, and me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they show up and they vanquish the demons, and uh, the, with uh, with they get rid of um, evil Leo, and they go over to uh, Wyatt and they do the goodwill hunting. It's not your fault. It's yeah. not your fault. And then they spank him. The end. <laughs> Just kidding. It is your fault. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have taught you how to read. <laughs> you know, at the end of this episode, should have been too. It's like they bind his powers. <laughs> You think? It should have happened after the fucking dragon thing, but they're all idiots. Definitely. Like, the story could have been, like, how this magic's all gone wrong, you know, Grandma goes, screws it up, and then just runs away from her problems. And then they drop a house on her. Yeah, they get rid of her, Victor. You know what? This episode should have ended at being a different show. Yeah. Victor and Patty are like, you know, they're better off. If you don't listen to Crazy Grandma Ghost, bind their powers. <laughs> They're so stupid. Anyway, Phoebe in 98 degrees. <laughs> um, in order to uh, not appear as childlike as she did before, she's put her hair in little uh, pigtail buns. <laughs> uh, and so, so she goes she to me. Phoebe Brown! Phoebe Brown! New cliche! And then she starts sucking on the trophy like a pacifist. <laughs> Reader's Digest. <laughs> give, uh, give me that stunt casting. <laughs> he's like, wow, this is hot. And she's like, ew, the end. Uh, she's like, look, I was drunk. Sorry about all that. And he's like, but you liked me. No, I was drunk, but you liked me. <laughs> You called me, like, 20 times. He should have said you called me 98 times and then looked at the camera. (laughs) Yeah, and then they play a song. (laughs) And then it, like, cuts to another shot of Phoebe looking at him staring at nothing. (laughs) She, uh... (laughs) He's a creep. He's a creep. Yes, I'm just gonna he say is. he's a creep. He does a lot of things like okay, there's a lot of things in this episode where she's like a fucking asshole to him. Like, oh, so I'm not saying that he's at fault for everything. They're but both. It's one of those it's things. Just two terrible people. Yeah, <laughs> the two terrible people who deserve each other. Um, mm-hmm. they they do this a lot in his run. His I don't remember how many episodes, but there was a bit of a run with him. And uh, they have a lot of things with him where it's just like no means yes kind of shit that mm-hmm. I, I can't stand. A lot of yeah. presumptuous stuff, like him running an ad in the paper for a contest to win a date with Phoebe without telling her, and then like <laughs> making it so that he wins and shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole like, oh, but you like me, but you like me. It's like she was drunk. Just take her word for it. If she was drunk, she doesn't like you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if she tells you something later, maybe. But you can't. You can't be like, oh yeah, you do, because you were acting like you liked me when you were drunk. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he's a creep. She thanks him and his earring for bailing her out. <laughs> she leaves uh and he says to himself if she turns around she likes him and she does 
Yeah, and she, and she shoots lasers through her <laughs> eyes <laughs> and explodes his heart. <laughs> and he's like, that means she really likes me, and then he dies. <laughs> and she goes, misogyny! <laughs> and then he falls down into hell beside Cole, and he's like, fell for Phoebe, did you? <laughs> <laughs> There's a, their, own, their own section of hell just for Phoebe's exes <laughs> <Yeah>. and neighbor Dan. <laughs> they never dated, but she liked him, kind of. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Ghost Mom and Dad are, uh, talking to each other, and, uh, Ghost Mom's sad because they missed a lot of the girls growing up, so they have kind of a nice scene there. Again, very short, though, but... Mm -hmm. But that scene worked pretty well. Um, but Piper busts in, goes, Break it up! Kids are coming in! (laughs) (laughs) I'm not even paraphrasing. She goes, Break it up! (laughs) Dude, like... It's his dead wife. <laughs> How often does he get to see her? Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> um, Grandma Ghost is there, and she's like, well, my way would have worked, too. <laughs> what? <fucking> bitch. <laughs> you You're bitch. Like, no, it wouldn't have. She should be apologizing to everyone. She apologizes to Leo half-acidly. He even goes like, that's an apology? And they're like, I'd take that if I were you. <laughs> yeah. Is Victor who says that? I'd take that if I were you. Oh, he I says think. it. Oh, I thought it was one of the girls. No, he says that because they think he's like, you know, it's the best you're ever going to get out of that miserable thing. Nah, <laughs> that fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> can can we say that? Is that? I guess so. <laughs> Demonetized. <laughs> Demonetized. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if it was her way, they would have just left them as babies and then killed some leprechauns just because. Yeah. How was that going to work? What was going to work about them being infantile idiots? She doesn't explain. Doesn't explain. She can't take the L. Um, <laughs> so they summon all their ancestor ghosts and awakening happens. The end. <laughs> yeah. And then the ancestor ghosts drag her to hell. They're like, you were going to let her do- <laughs> Her future die because of your stubbornness. <laughs> you rip her pieces. <laughs> Blood bag. All right, Phelan, what'd you think of the episode? <laughs> Did you like there it? Was, there was a chance for something interesting, like I was talking about earlier. I think there could have been a funny kind of clashing between Victor and Grandma Ghost while they try to wrangle the sisters as they're not right in the head from the spell but they don't execute on it properly and then like just bringing the uh, patty in in like the last act feels very slapdash like oh can we get this actress in here okay let's throw her in now too like it would have been nice if we had done a more proper story with her and victor talking about how the fact they never got to raise their children correctly and stuff Mm mm-hmm and that they hate how Grandma goes <laughs> raised and that she's evil, and, and they why... drop a house on her. Yeah, that's why and they that... killed her. Yeah, Heart you know, attack? I... I don't think so. I'm driven insane by stupid magic babies and just the fact that Piper doesn't find their powers. There's, It's nonsense. Yeah, same charm, same problems. Uh, a lot of the issues we've brought up before, I agree with what you said. I think there's an idea there. They just, um, it's just got that later season stink. It's too much altogether. Um, they don't have time for anything. But I think even if they did, it's still this season, like at this point in the show, um, they don't care. It feels hollow. Mm-hmm. All right, one last question. Who's the Margoyle? I could go Piper again (laughs) (laughs) because of her not binding her baby's powers, but it's going to go to Grandma Ghost this time. (laughs) Who who can out-evil Piper? (laughs) Who can out-loser her? Because of her being so stupid or messing up her spell, not wanting to take accountability for that, then yelling at Victor, yelling at Leo, trying to gaslight him into thinking he's trying to kill his son with no evidence, really. <laughs> and then for her fucking off <laughs> in the last act of the episode because she's mad that their parents want to decide something about them. 
<laughs> She's like, I don't care if they die then. Screw them. They're your dumb kids. <laughs> I dare you say that I don't care about these kids. Bye. <laughs> yeah, bye. We'll see if they're dead or not after I'm done my temper tantrum. <laughs> You're supposed to be the oldest one and the most mature. It's not supposed to be the opposite. <laughs> Screw you, Grandma Margoyle. I'm just, I'm just telling it like it is. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Grandma Margoyle. You're the evilest one in the room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you didn't have to tell it like it is. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your Margoyle? I, I was torn between two choices for standout loser of the episode. I quite liked um, Ben, the student teacher, <laughs> who, from his perspective, what's going on here? He seemed into it with Paige. <laughs> yeah. So he was willing to, like, have an affair with the headmaster of magic school. What's his deal? Yeah. Just seemed utterly unexplained. He's very unusual characters. That's, that's why he was, I was thinking about him, but I don't know if he was enough of a loser. So I had to go with... Same choice, Grandma Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Double Jeopardy or yeah. whatever. <laughs> Say Margoyle. Whoa. <laughs> the the double mint theme, the double your Margoyle. Do 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 What? That's a double mint. Mentos. Mentos. Oh, that's Mentos. Yeah. What is yeah. the double? The mint Margoyle theme? maker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I wasn't thinking of the right thing. What is the double mint theme? They have one, right? Yeah, they do. I can't think of it. <laughs> I don't know. Peter, drop it in here. Remind us what's the double mint <laughs> gum theme. Double your pleasure. Double your fun. That's the same and of the great mint and double mint gum. Da -da 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 double mint. Da -da -da. <laughs> I'm just guessing that's how it went. <laughs> yeah. Da -da 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 double mint, da -da -da -da. double mint, 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 And you chose her because she's so well reasoned? No, because she's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> she's hateful. There's no comeuppance for her like usual. She's she makes the others look better in comparison because she's really bad. Yeah. It's not just like selfishness. It's like it's evil. <laughs> she's an <laughs> evil character. <laughs> Grandma Ghost. Overstays I never knew what true evil was until I met Grandma Ghost. There should have been like the speech by Victor at the end talking about <laughs> I didn't think true evil existed in the world. Until I saw Grandma Ghost. <laughs> she she, she could have come in there and then, like, seen evil Leo and then went, like, ah, power, unlimited power. Yeah, exactly. tries to absorb him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> would, have been a gr would have been a brilliant storyline if they'd gone this route and, like, you know, there's an arc here. Grandma Ghost is evil, but it doesn't get revealed till a bit later. Oh, my God. That'd be and, great. Yeah, and Victor and Patty have to team up to stop him. Well, the Charmed Ones just sit around complaining. <laughs> ba back in her invisible days when she was turning the pages of the book for them to like, leave them clues, that was actually to lead them down the path of evil, and that's why they turned yeah. out like they did. It was that's all That's how we got here in decision. season yeah. seven. <laughs> it all makes sense. She led them down the path of Prue dying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> da -da -da -da. All by her design. <laughs> <laughs> Double mint. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I'm done. Are you done? <laughs> sure. Uh, if you guys are enjoying this podcast, uh, I'd appreciate it if you liked, subscribed, or reviewed on whatever platform you're enjoying it on. Uh, you can find us on YouTube under youtube.com slash movie nights, the series. Uh, you can also find us on, uh, in audio form at anchor.fm under Charmed Rewind or Charmed Hard with a Vengeance. Uh, you can support us on Patreon, uh, get access to polls or early access to videos and such. Uh, my stuff's at patreon.com slash movie nights. Uh, Phelan's at patreon.com slash Phelus. Thanks to Peter for doing the editing for us. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at Pretor Hunter. He's got lots of funny stuff on there. Uh, what are the hashtags, Phelan? Hashtag double, double, hashtag double Margoyle. <laughs> uh, hashtag true evil. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag.
Hashtag Grandma Ghost is a censored. <laughs> Grandma Ghost with the least. <laughs> yeah. Ghost with the least. <laughs> yeah, the ghost with the least. All right. <laughs> Uh, that's it for us. We'll see you Charmanders next time. Bye!